I saw this tweet recently and it said, hooking up with artists is hot because they'll be like, I thought of you when I wrote this song. What are tech guys gonna do? Name a git branch after you? The fuck? And clearly this is a joke, but it made me think of two things. One, the ways in which tech guys are actually super creative and thoughtful. And two, the ways stereotypes like these can hinder not just human connection, but software development itself. And I thought a good way to start talking about these two subjects was through the time-honored tradition of Easter eggs. <laughs> So what is an easter egg? I know I don't mean the kind supposedly laid by a rabbit. Also, I looked this up and I am still so unsatisfied. Can anyone tell me why they're eggs if it's a bunny and not like something that lays eggs? No one thought the easter hen was good. Easter snake didn't make it past the board meeting. Easter egg for the purpose of this video is going to be used to mean a message, trick, or unusual behavior hidden inside a computer program by its creator. The term used in this manner was coined around 1979 to describe a hidden message in the Atari video game adventure. This message and the reason it was left are actually great illustrations of the solidarity of programmers and the mentality of what it means to be a developer in general. If you saw Ready Player One, and if you're watching this, I am assuming you did, you already know the story, and also I don't care what the normies say, I fucking love that movie, bro! In 1976, when Atari was acquired by Warner Communications, the union was rocky, to say the least. With the initial culture clash between the New York executives and the California developers being strong enough to make Atari fear they might lose some of their programmers over the strained relations. In an effort to stop them from being poached by competitors, Atari removed the names of its game developers from their products so they'd be harder to identify and recruit. As a game developer, though, this felt like erasure from being credited with the actual work they'd done building the game, which probably only worked to widen the gulf between executives and tech guys, which is is still felt pretty widely today. Thus, Atari's credit removal and lack of royalty payments led to the departure of several programmers, notably David Crane, Larry Kaplan, Alan Miller, and Bob Whitehead, who left to form Activision, which became one of Atari's main competitors. One developer, Warren Robinette, took matters into his own hands, and in doing so, originated a tradition in software development, gaming, and storytelling in general that still continues today. Robinette had heard of the Beatles leaving hidden messages in their songs, especially when they were played in reverse. Inspired by this, and unbeknownst to anyone else involved in the game, Robinette wrote a hidden, nearly inaccessible room where he embedded his mark on the software. Players who entered the room would be greeted with the text created by Warren Robinette floating in midair and continuously changing color. Robinette waited for his secret to be discovered by other developers, but the game was released with his secret room intact. It was unmentioned in the game's manual and remained undocumented for over a year. Finally, as is often the case with cool technology stuff, it was unearthed by a young person just fooling around with a piece of tech they thought was cool. 15-year-old Adam Clayton from Salt Lake City discovered the hidden room and sent a letter explaining it to Atari. But this is the part where we get to talk about solidarity. Since Robinette had quit the company already, Atari ordered the developers they still had to find and destroy the code responsible. However, the developer who found it recognized it for what it was, an act of defiance, done in the name of developers getting recognition and fair treatment, and he refused to destroy it. His name was Brad Stewart, and his official response to the company was that he would not remove the room, but if he were to do anything at all, he would rather change the message to say, fixed by Brad Stewart. Did it also help that creating a new ROM mask would cost around $10,000 or $31,030 today? So it would have been pretty annoying? Probably, but that's when Steve Wright stepped in. Wright was the director of software development, and he argued that it gave players additional incentive to play the game more, hoping to find it, suggesting that these were like Easter eggs for players to find. That mention was the coinage of the phrase. Atari then adopted Easter eggs completely, saying that their future releases would contain more hidden content, although it was often just limited to the initials of the developers. This established Easter eggs as a way for developers to communicate hidden messages with only those most skilled in the game, most educated on the lore, most knowledgeable in general. I mean, that's pretty uplifting. Come on, we're nerds. We love quests. We love the idea that the truth will reveal itself only to those most worthy of finding it. Especially because as a young smart person, you spend so much time getting told you're not worthy of the party or the friend group or whatever. A message for the community, for the real ones, that's pretty cool. Test the bounds to find them or indeed determine if they're there at all. Always remember that there is no spoon. Do not accept the so-called limitations or laws of others without testing them first. Blind acceptance of the bars is what puts you in the cage. Majority rule does not not create truth. Truth is truth. Just because everyone else thinks the prison is there doesn't mean you can't be the only one who walks free. Walk right out. A hallmark of being a developer is understanding things
things that others don't. A sensation that, yes, is intensified by learning to program when you actually end up speaking a language or languages that most people can't understand, but it also predates any hard skill of any developer I've ever met. In fact, it is what drives us to computers, the need to pick things apart and see how they work, to optimize social processes that seem unnecessarily chaotic and immeasurably complex. We look deeper into the problems that others shy away from. We demand the bounds to infinity by defining very specifically every finite thing, no matter how massive it may seem to the untrained or unmotivated eye. That makes it all the more frustrating when our work is overlooked. People tend to undervalue or fear things they don't yet understand. This leads to perceptions of pretension on both sides. On any programming team, especially in game dev where you have your executives, your artists, and your developers, communication can be really hard. Each group speaks a vastly different language, and it's easy to feel like the other branches don't value your work enough to empathize with your needs. Executives think we just spend money unnecessarily while we give about how dull they are. Artists think we limit their creativity when things are functionally impossible or just too difficult to justify the cost, and also give all about how dumb they are. And developers think executives and artists don't understand the challenges of coding, and therefore request unreasonable things on unreasonable timelines with unreasonably few resources. This is why positive communication makes a dev team work. Simply recalling that we're on the same team, we have the same goal, means we remember that the reason we need multidisciplinary teams is so we can all play to our strengths, cover each other's weaknesses. One of the coolest parts of working in teams like this is watching people do things with ease that have been so challenging for you. It really makes you appreciate the work and skill of others. And you can really bond when you let them know how impressive it is. All this to say, keep your communication open. And remember, we're working together and human to human translation is really important sometimes. The most incredible feats of software engineering have only been accomplished by teams of people. Together we can create so much more than what's possible alone. Even anonymous isn't just one person. It's all of us gun together. Speaking of awesome teams, this is the part where I remind you that this video was made in partnership with Grizzly Shield Services. If we're talking about fantastic teams to be on, this is the pinnacle of my list. Also, if you came from TikTok or the Discord server, this special hello is for you. I love y'all. Stay safe. Till next time. I leave my window open, pretend you're coming inside, can't fix what isn't